Hey everybody, Aaron from Otter Creek and BushHoggingServices.com. Uh, today I wanted to do a little video on websites and uh, I get questions about things that I do online. Um, I started building websites a long, long time ago and I'm not a uh, coder or developer. I don't know how to write HTML. Um, what has happened over the last 20 years is the, uh, the designer tools that are available uh, that allow you basically to use building blocks to put a website together one piece at a time or through the use of a template is now very, very easy. It's cost effective and you can really do a lot with your business through these website designers. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of different websites that I've built. Uh, this is our homepage uh, for bushhoggingservices.com, which many of you may know. This is just, uh, I do this on the weekends for fun to keep busy, to pay for some equipment, things of that nature. So, um, you know, here's that website. And it's not bad. I mean, I actually like it. It does really well for SEO, which stands for Search Engine Optimization, which means I'm not paying for advertising. I'm getting free exposure. And I'll show you a little bit of how that works. But just a couple other websites for other businesses uh, that I own. Here's one called PubSafe. This is a really nice site. Uh, it's a different business. Uh, all together, so uh, a lot more involved, a lot bigger uh, web presence, things of that nature. This is an online directory. It is a website, but uh, websites have plugins or add-ins, depending on what you want to call them, that uh, really bring an entire package of capabilities to a website. And you'll see some of those uh, plugins, as they're called in WordPress, as we look through some of these sites. But this website here had a directory that we plugged into it that basically manages the data structure behind the website and allows for things like being able to search for certain types of services and technology in different areas. And, um, you know, this is for fleet services uh, where people can go and they can just search for somebody, let's say that somebody that does GPS installations in their particular area, they'd be able to look and see. But, uh, you know, websites like this take a day or two. And then we have uh, Fleetistics, which is actually uh, my biggest business and the one I've been running for many, many years. We do GPS tracking and telematics. So if you need a tracker for your tractor, uh, i.e. you don't want to get it stolen, or if it gets stolen, you want a shot at getting it back, check out Fleetistics. I keep one on my uh, tractor, my trailers, my vehicles, my mowers, you know, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, I get a discount rate, so why not do it? Plus, we get to use that data for demonstrations. But, um, you know, if this is the type of thing that you're looking for, check out Fleetistics, and you can also see the website design. Now, sometimes when you're building a website, there are just things that you cannot do. Like this menu here is actually a custom-built menu that I didn't know how to do, so I outsourced it. It cost me 500 bucks, and I sent it out to somebody to get a much more professional-looking website. Uh, or web menu. This home page is actually a custom page because there's a lot, there's a big difference between being able to do something and being able to uh, make it look and perform correctly. And sometimes you just have to recognize, you know, this is outside uh, my league. But in the bush hogging industry, the bar is pretty low, right? So getting a couple pictures and a video laid out on a page. Uh, it's pretty static. It doesn't have to be great. People aren't looking to you as a bush hogging provider and thinking, God, you know, his website has to compete with, you know, a great, you know, uh, magazine or news uh, website or something like that. The expectation is not there. So uh, don't be afraid to give this a shot is my point. Uh, you will save a lot of time and money if you do things correctly. And the best part is, as things change, you can quickly make those changes to your website to get your site better and better. So uh, there are a couple ways of looking at uh, or tackling the website challenge. Uh, there are website builders out there, such as, uh, I don't know, uh, Wix, I think is one of them. And then, you know, there's probably a dozen like that that aren't bad. I mean, they, they make some things very easy for you. The problem is you're sharing your, your space on their servers with hundreds and thousands of other websites. The performance of your website is going to be very much impacted by what goes on with the other websites and how many websites they can jam onto a particular server. And what they're going to do is they're going to say, well, you can, you know, we'll host your website for only 50 bucks a month or whatever it is. 
Uh, and then what you're going to find is your website is so slow and uh, poorly performing that you're going to be pushed into um, you know suggested upgrades. Like, oh, you know, you're on a server with a bunch of other people. Let's uh, let's get you moved over to uh, another uh, server. Uh, the, you know, to go to that server, it's going to be another you know 40 bucks a month. And then if you want to be able to do email campaigning, then that's an additional cost for that. So, you know, they drive their cost up because I mean they're a business and that's what they do through adding uh, and offering services. You just have to understand that is what you're looking at. Uh, if you want help from them, you probably have to have a premium package. If you want them to design something, you know, you're going to pay for those services just like you want customers to pay you. So let's take a look at what we've done and you can decide if that's going to work for you. And then you can uh, work towards that or you can just pick a different direction. But this will help you get oriented in what you want to do. And all of the websites that, that I've shown you are on WordPress. WordPress is the biggest website platform in the world and then um, on WordPress we also have um, installed a, uh, a design layer right which gives us all the boxes and the widgets and the tools and things like that called Divi um, and Divi makes me as an amateur uh, able to do a lot of things that you see online and um, we're watching this page slow load uh, and this is something to consider too, you know, so here we go. So it's, it's called a lazy load. So it doesn't load uh, content until you scroll down the page and this will all fill. I think I've got a weak internet connection. My computer has been a little, running a little slow, but uh, hopefully this isn't as, as poor performing as what you're seeing here because it's usually not bad. The site actually scores really well for SEO and part of that is uh, page performance. Uh, I think my computer's struggling doing this recording and playing content for some reason. So let's go ahead and get logged in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, uh, let me back up. In order to get a WordPress site, you would have to specify. So you can go to GoDaddy and say, hey, I want a WordPress site. I want uh, Divi installed. Again, you're going to be on a shared server. You know, you could potentially go to somebody and say, hey, would you host my website? Uh, the key thing in hosting a uh, website is a making sure that the provider will always give you admin access, right? You should be the super admin, the account holder, whatever it is at the highest level. And then you should give them permission to work on your website. And I'll show you how that looks. And then number two is you should have somewhere in their written agreement what the process and cost is going to be if you decide to move your website from their service to somebody else's. Are they going to try to hold you hostage or are they going to try to charge you $10,000 to move a website because moving a website is not that hard. Um, you know, people don't like to do that because they're giving up their revenue uh, to get there. But you should understand what that cost is so you can make a, you know, a good decision for yourself. Uh, because I have access to technology and people that know this technology, we actually host all of our websites on our own servers, so we're not competing with others. And it's just not as simple as doing that because you have security issues that uh, you have to be able to manage. So um, once WordPress is installed, the universal URL to access your admin uh, maintenance and building side of things is always the URL that you see here slash WP admin. When you do that, It'll take you to this page and then you'll enter your credentials, which I'm going to do. Um, there's a setup process for this. So, you know, somebody who is helping you get this far should be able to help you, um, you know, get through the initial setup, um, you know, step. So, okay. So we are now in the back end of the website and this is what you would see. This uh, view can look different because you can move things around here. Uh, but, in general, this is what you're going to see. The exact things that you see down in this menu will also vary because we have different things, plugins uh, installed based on different services that we wanted to include. Down here we have Divi, which is the, uh, the theme that we're using. And if you go to, uh, you can just do, type in Divi uh, website builder and it'll come up and you can see uh, by elegant themes, that's the one, right? So what I'm going to show you uh, when we actually look at web pages, 
we're looking at what Divi from Elegant Themes allows us to do through the uh, purchase of their of their tool. And I just tell you, Divi is so inexpensive. I, I don't know how they make money. They, they're overseas, so the cost of living over there must be nothing because they give you so much value for what the cost is. It's like 300 bucks, 500 bucks, not more than 500 bucks to basically get their entire theme. And you, it's a one-time cost, right? After that, you just get updates and updates and updates. And you can, uh, like we went and bought the entire package. We paid a, you know, one slightly higher price and got all of their features, uh, all of the future updates and everything, because we tend to use a lot of those different components on the different websites that we have. You may not need all that, but let's look down here. You can see it. Uh, we have an update. It's easy to see that. We can go up here. If we hover on that, we can go visit the website, right? That's easy. And if you uh, control click, control on your keyboard and click, it opens up in a new tab like I just did there. And then uh, we installed a Google Site Kit plugin. Posts are blog posts. Media is your media that you use on the website. These are your pictures and your uh, potentially video and things of that nature. Uh, pages are just that. What are the web pages that you have on the website? You can see that we actually have uh, ranks or scores because we use a particular plugin called Rank Math SEO, which we do recommend. Uh, it tells you how well your page is optimized to perform on the internet, right? You can see our home page right here. It says front page. We're 100 out of 100, and that's critical to being found um, through SEO in your area. If you can't get that, and without, it, without something like Rank Math, you're just never going to know where your, you know, the, the quality of the optimization effort that you've put into a particular page. So uh, Rank Math is one tool. There are many others. Uh, we'll, we'll get back into some pages here in a minute. Uh, we don't allow comments just because there's too much spamming. We don't use projects. Rank Math is a complete platform in and of itself. We're not going to get into that. The appearance, this is some theme customization. Uh, let's take a quick look at that. These are settings that you can set that are global, right? So if I want to change the font on the entire website, I want to come in here and I want to set as much of the theme content before I start to build. Because when you change a, something as simple as a font or a font size, what fit into an area at one font size might not fit into an area at a different font size. So you want to spend uh, an enormous amount of time working on this part to make sure that you're happy with it. My general recommendation is for somebody new, don't touch it. Just go with the defaults. If you like how it looks when you install the theme, then uh, because you can pick themes. So you've got WordPress, you've got Divi, and then you've got themes above that. And you can pick from all these different themes. And if you like the theme as it looks, the typography, the layout, um, you know, uh, placement of different things, the functionality, that's great. Leave it as close to default as possible, and you don't have to make any of these decisions. But you can come in here, and this is where you enter in like site title information. This is stuff that shows up in search engines, and you know if you post your URL to Facebook or something like that. This is where you add your logo, so it shows up up here. Uh, you know some layout settings, some typography. How big do you want things? How wide do you want the page? Again, you can fool with it just to see what happens, but you can also hit the back arrow, which restores it. Uh, it's an undo or moves it back to default. So uh, as you play with things, you can put it back and then you can exit out. So at some future date, if you want to make an adjustment, you can do that. Footer menus, right? If you go all the way down to the footer at the bottom. You know, how do you how do you make footer menus? You right? These aren't very good, quite honestly, but you know it's good enough. Um, you know, what do buttons look like? What do the blogs look like? What what's it look like in mobile? And if you look down here, you'll see. These different icons. If I click on the mobile icon, it reshapes or resizes the page for me automatically. Now I can check to see what it looks like on a mobile device because so many people are searching for these search or these services on mobile. You have to make sure that it looks decent on a mobile view, and there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. And uh, Divi makes that much much easier. And I don't, you know, just for the record, uh, I'm just a fan of Divi. They're not, we're not sponsors. We don't get anything free from them, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, you know, this is about helping you guys be able to do something that you think that you probably can't do, right? Some homepage settings here. Um, 
you know, post page, you have to you have to tell the theme what page is your home page and what page is your post page, right? So we we match up the post page with the blog URL, and then uh, we want the the home page to be what you would expect. Bushlogmanservices.com is the URL for the home page. And then we link the logo up to the home page as well. So it's always uh, expected that you can click the logo and you can go back to the home page on most websites. All right. So let's exit out of these theme customization options. Um, and when you first get this, how do you even get started from here? Well, what I would tell you is click around, explore. Uh, and because WordPress and Divi are both mega platforms on the internet there are thousands and thousands of videos that you can watch you can go to uh, you can go to Divi and they've got all kinds of training videos and tutorials and things like that on how to use their theme and then you can watch YouTube videos on how to use WordPress right and if you need help on installing a, a theme things of that nature then again just search Google you know Divi theme in WordPress how to install a Divi theme in WordPress and you'll have plenty of uh, videos to watch. Other content down here, plugins. Let's look at plugins. These are those uh, blocks of software and capabilities that you can either get for free or you can pay for, and then you can install them, and it interacts with WordPress and your Divi theme. That gives you these additional capabilities that you're not going to have otherwise. So here you see the site kit by Google, and you see the site kit by by Google here. This is looking at Google Analytics and connecting the analytics to your website to report inside of WordPress instead of having to go out to Google Analytics to understand how well your site's performing. You see we have Rank Math here, we have Rank Math here. So when this is installed, it adds it to the menu on the left hand side. And you can deactivate some of these. Uh, sometimes they cause problems that you didn't expect and you know you only want to turn them on to do something and then turn them off. Uh, but these are the ones that you can capture from this video and see what we're using. Now, um, we're going to break this video up because I can see we're already at like 17 and a half minutes. But before I do that, before we actually look at a page, I want to uh, just give you a piece of advice that I've learned over the years. You can find free plugins and I don't recommend them unless there's something special about them. Uh, and why do I say that? Because free plugins aren't maintained, right? WordPress is constantly being updated. Divi's constantly being updated. And you want the plugins to also be updated to address security issues. Uh, they're constantly patching these things uh, for security vulnerabilities so your uh, website doesn't get hacked and things of that nature. So if you pay for a plugin, then you will be purchasing something that the seller is motivated to maintain uh, a certain level of quality because they're making money. If they don't maintain that quality, people aren't going to buy their plugins, right? That's beneficial to you. Uh, I hardly ever recommend uh, using freeware just because it's not maintained, right? So spend a little bit of money, get your website where it needs to be and earn more money down the road because you have a web presence and you're not spending tens or thousands of dollars on Google PPC and you're throwing money into a black hole and building nice facilities for them. Um, I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in my businesses over the years, probably millions at this point, um, over the years, you know, paying Google PPC and I've moved away from a lot of it because there are there's so much money in certain industries you just can't compete, right? And quite honestly, it's very hard to uh, utilize their tools. They're very complex and robust. And uh, you really have to hire somebody as a specialty to take advantage of the PPC capabilities that are out there, which means just more money being spent. So uh, that's, that's it for this particular session. I'm gonna go ahead and break now, and then we'll come back and we'll look at a page and open a page up and show you what that looks like on the inside.